Okay, so um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this installment of Resilience with the Center for Historic Houses at OP Jindal Global University. I'm Julian Seethel. I'm an associate with the center. I'll be filling in for Dr. Schmidt today. Um, and uh, today's lecture will focus on Plasto de Deo. Um, of course, the Resilience uh, lecture series is part of our knowledge transfer initiative, giving a platform for owners of historic houses to share their stories. So we have firsthand accounts of these uh, historic properties and also hear wonderful things that you would not normally see in um, history books. Um, so I'm pleased to welcome uh, Mr. Ruben Vasco de Gama and Ms. Cecilia Vasco de Gama from Palacio de Deo. Um, it, this promises to be a very exciting talk as it highlights um, India's Portuguese uh, heritage. And also, this is a very um, beautiful story um, of this uh, property. So I'd like to thank um, the audience for coming to um, today's talk and attending. Um, I'd like to mention that we like to have an interactive session. Um, so please uh, use the chat um, option to introduce yourselves, make comments, and also ask questions. Um, if you have a question, please um, put a queue in front so it'll be easier for us to see it at the end when we have our Q and A. Um, so I'd like to um, hand it over to our presenters um, so we can uh, get started. Um, there, let's stop. Hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you, Julian, and thank you, Dr. Steyr Schmitz, for giving me this privilege. Welcome to this virtual presentation of Palacio du Dion. Today, I will be taking you to Goa, which is most famous for its lovely beaches. Today, through my presentation, I will take you all on a journey to Palacio du Dion, situated in the hinterlands of Goa. Before I take you to Palacio, I would like to tell you a little bit about the town and its history that heads us up to it. Sorry, but we can't we can't hear the video. If there's maybe if you unmute the Palacio du Dion in the richly cultivated hinterland of Kepem is reached by a lovely drive through verdant paddy fields, fourteen kilometers from Margao. The Dion's private palace is situated in gardens that spill down to the Kushawati River. The Kushawati, a tributary of the Zwari River, allowed the direct connection by boat to Rashal and Old Goa. Kepem, part of the new conquest, was incorporated in Goa only in 1774 in an agreement signed between the Portuguese and the Raja of Sundem. The king of Sundem, Raja Sadavisa, who ruled part of Vijayanagar, was attacked by Hyder Ali and was compelled to seek the help of Portuguese. The Raja ended his exile and compensated the Portuguese by handing over his kingdom to them. A friend shared with me an article that he had written many years before about an incident of Diao's life in Kepem. The Diao used to enjoy very much to bathe in the Kushawati River 
and his dogs would accompany him. One day, when he was bathing, his dog began to bark, and he realized there was a crocodile hiding in the river. Crocodile ate his dog, but he was saved. Jean Paul was born to Faustin da Costa Pereira da Almeida and Marguerite Neto in the city of Braga in, 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 in Portugal. He was part of the entourage of the bare-footed friar, Dom Frey Manuel de Santa Catarina. He arrived in Goa on the 3rd October 1779 when he was 19 years of age. José Paul spent the remaining 55 years of his life in Goa. He died on 10th January 1835 at his residence in the Capella de Mont in Old Goa. Bestowed with exceptional intelligence, he rapidly rose to positions of responsibility. He spent a great amount of his efforts to establish the two seminaries of Choran and Rashol, which were navigable by Kushavati River. Jean Paul. Incidentally, Archbishop Santa Catarina, on his way to inaugurate the new church of Zambaoli, he had stopped at Palacio de Dion, where unfortunately died here that evening. And now his remains are in the Santa Cruz Church built by the Diao in Kepem. In 1779, Padre João Paulo de Almeida founded a hamlet in Kepem. Kepem was in those days covered with forest. He ordered the planting of rice, coconut palms, and other fruit trees. He established a public market, hospital, and other facilities for the benefit of the inhabitants. He also founded the Santa Cruz Church at his own cost, as inscribed in the pyramidal structure in the churchyard. It was believed that the Dion began by erecting two columns at the entrance of Kepem. Thereafter, he obtained permission that the criminal offenders who entered this village across these columns to work would rehabilitate themselves in this village that he had founded. Thus, he was able to establish Kepem as an arable, self-sustaining and habitable place. A set of seven pyramidal structures erected by Dion Almeida once dotted the Kepem townscape, each bearing a plague that set in stone his establishments and provisions. Besides wanting the place to be self-sustainable, he wanted the Palacio to survive and as such offered it as holiday home to the governors of Portuguese India. In fact, Lopes Mendes in his book mentioned it as Palacio dos Governadores. Palacio de Dion is situated on a hillock facing the church of Santa Cruz that he built. The main facade turns to the south, surrounded by gardens. At the back of the house, the terrain slopes down to the Kushavati River. The main facade presents a tripartite scheme with a central nucleus flanked by two symmetrical bodies.
each side alternating with protruding pilastas with Corinthian capitals set by the four columns of square section with Corinthian capitals. The porch is surmounted by a triangular pediment with the tympanum filled with bas relief in stucco, surrounded by foliage. Within the interior, the five quinas of the Portuguese royal arms. At the center of the main facade are the staircase. Emphasizing the beginning of the stairs, two walls are placed symmetrically. In front of the entrance walls are also four chairs carved in laterite where the servants were placed in reception and in liturgical ceremonies. Lopish Mendes drew a picture of the palace when he was there in 1862. Thanks to his sketches, it is possible to reconstitute the design of the palace. those days perhaps were built on the banks of the river for ease of mobility as roads were not yet developed. One can see in the back entrance the passage from the river to the front is lined with ornate vases. Common to religious structures of the era, a flight of step leads up to the porch. Different in configuration to the normal, this balcony is without the usual benches, suggesting that the porch was used for the purpose of briefly receiving visitors before taking them indoors. The entrance vestibule can be accessed from the balcony through three wide doorways. The entrance vestibule surrounds the chapel on three sides acting as an extended sitting space during the course of religious services. The central doorway brings one face to face with the chapel itself. The door to its west leads to the two formal antechambers, the library and the sitting room. Standing as an island central to the entrance vestibule, the chapel was once dedicated to Nossa Senhora dos Dores. The original idol of this Nossa Senhora dos Dores was later transferred to a more final location within the Se Cathedral of Old Goa during the lifetime of Diao and a large crucifix now takes its place center stage. This chapel, completed in 1786, served as the location at which the first mass was served in Kepem town. The walls of the chapel are covered with frescoes done using bon fresco technique. This were unraveled very recently during the pandemic times. To the west of the entrance vestibule lie the social spaces of the house connected by a series of doors. The first of the two antechambers is a sitting room where the portrait of the first owner, Diao Almeida, hangs imposingly over the sofa. The door to its left leads to the library, a room in which perhaps the sermons of his mass were written in by candlelight. Next is the sala, being special formal entertaining space, its four full length windows overlooking the beautiful gardens. Next is the drawing room. A 
A key feature adopted from pre-colonial Hindu architecture is the vasari. Always centrally located, this space functions as a dining room. This airy space has dining tables and a number of wide windows clad in oyster shell window panes. Acting as a link between the formal and service spaces of the house, a door at the far end of the Havasari leads us to Dion's living areas and kitchen. A unique adaptation in the house is the Belvedere, which is semi-open space perpendicular to the Vasari. Its roof supported by nine pillars and a balustrade running along the length. Mirroring the portions of the sala on the west end of the house, a similar room in the eastern wing once served as the original bedchamber of the Dion. Common to From the layout of the house, it is very clear that a Hindu or a local person was involved in the design of the house, as it has very distinctive Hindu influence and it was adapted to a European man. About Nossa Senhora de Dorsh today is in uh, Se Cathedral in the third altar, where also the tomb of the priest, José Paul Costa Pereira Almeida is there. The Palacio do Dion boasts of wonderful unique spaces, a lot of attention to detail paid to the outdoor spaces and gardens which include pond, a terrace landscaping design, a gazebo where he would personally receive and counsel persons who came to keep him seeking his advice. The Palacio presents a remarkable group of gardens separated by balustrades and low walls forming spaces with different degrees of privacy. The gardens still retain some features such as the pond, the loggia, belvedere, balustrades, vases and stone ornaments which give us a description of complex garden quite unparalleled in Goa. The Palacio de Dion has a very unique garden and thanks to the drawings and the photographs done by people like Lopes Mendes and Senora Helda Carita helped us to reconstruct the features of the gardens. The house is of historical importance as it was built by the founder of Kepem town. It is exceptional in both its merging of Christian and Hindu architectural styles and the two acre lush ornate gardens surrounding it. It allows visitors a relaxed and expansive experience of a fully functioning stately Indo-Portuguese household and a rare insight into the style and grace of an era when the house was originally built. The authenticity extends to every visit highlight, meal time, 
in the rear covered garden, the Belvedere that sits in the view of the ancient Kushavati river. I hope this will inspire people that it is not impossible to restore and keep our heritage. In fact, it could be most enjoyable process. What you saw is the old and the new uh, photos. While restoring the house from decay and the fury of tropical climate, we wanted to ensure that the Palacio do Dion wasn't musty with museum style preservation or compromised by forced commercialization. We wanted the Palacio do Dion to be a compilation of exhibits that tell the story of Goa's colonial period. What resulted was a home, living museum and a labor of love. where family possessions sit happily alongside the antiques. The highlight is the curated lunch where local produce and traditional techniques are given a modern spin, a meeting of Indian and European flavors, a meal that tells countless stories. This is done entirely with the help of local people in search of a livelihood. I'm going to tell you all about different events that we do here to take the restoration work forward. We are most grateful to have achieved even more than what we ever dreamed of. And to make it possible to recreate the Palacio do Dion into a place to live in, love in, laugh in, and dream in. A perfect piece of genuine Goa where nature, history, and food meet in perfect harmony.
casa portuguesa, com certeza, é com certeza uma casa portuguesa. No conforto florzinho do meu lar, há a fartura de carinho, a cortina da janela do ar, mais o sol que bate nela. Um bar está pouco, pouco cheio para alegrar, uma existência cinjada. And we have had good fortune of meeting some extraordinary people. Vivian? Vivian, hello. Julian, hello. Yes, hello. Uh, uh, that's, that was the end of the presentation. Okay, um, so we'll just like to um, hand it over to a QA. and a um, So if anyone has any questions, um, please uh, utilize the chat option or um, we can unmute you and you can ask your question directly. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, start with that. Um, okay, uh, Marta, um, so we're just going to unmute you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Fantastic presentation and historic uh, showing how it all came about. I was wondering about the furniture in the Palacio. Uh, was it there or where where? It is. Is it original? How how did you do about the furniture? I would be interested in knowing. Basically, if, uh, uh, actually, most of the furniture in the house is of that period. I wouldn't say everything is from the house, but what we did is we made a study on a lot of uh, 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 things written about the history about the house and what type of furniture was used at that period of time, and we collected. But 99% of the things out of that period, I wouldn't say everything is from the house. Thank you. Um, so we had a, another question um, in the chat uh, from Cyrus who asked, um, does the Goa government provide any grants for the maintenance of this majestic house? Well, um, uh, basically, basically in Goa, there are no schemes as where the government helps. And as such, we, we wanted to take that step and make the heritage places uh, self-sustainable. And as such, after doing uh, a restoration, uh, we, we started doing different types of events which helped us to take our work forward. I wouldn't say it... it um, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So, if is there any more questions, um, just feel free um, to ask. Um, I think if there's no one will ask a question right now, I think maybe I will ask one, um, particularly. The restoration of the historic house is a very complex project. Um, so I just want to hear more from you about what kind of difficulties you encountered. What were some of things that you were um, that you came to learn over the process of this that you really felt was uh, life changing? Basically, the, uh, uh, there was hardly anything remaining here. So, and not many of the um, uh, things uh, which were written would help. So, it was some things to imagination, some uh, uh, some things which we visited in Braga. Also, a lot of features, uh, similar features are there. Uh, 
of course, some of the uh, uh, we found things written about the place which helped us to finish the place. The most difficult was to get the uh, you know uh, uh, the right type of people to do the right type of things. So it could uh, it could uh, you know sometimes take a lot of time. By the time you get the right people for the right thing, so in the process, uh, the the good thing we had to learn a lot of things on our own, which tried and try to fix it and try to give knowledge to people. Like for example, there might be a carpenter, but the right type of carpenter do the right type of things. So we have to you know learn by ourselves a little bit like that, and you know try to um, teach the right things to those people to get to the right. Uh, right thing what we wanted to do. Um, thank you. Um, so I'm just wondering um, in terms of how you went about researching um, the palace to get it restored, um, what, what techniques did you use um, to you know, find different things about the color and uh, um, what furniture would have been present um, in the time period that you're trying, you are restoring it to? Basically, we have been very lucky as far as this place is concerned. Like many of the things fell in, on its place by itself. Like so first, the first, when we took up the place, we went on meeting a lot of people who might have known a little bit about this place, who have, might have lived here in the past. Then making a little bit study about the, uh, on the history books, then we went to Braga from where originally this Diao um, uh, had come from uh, because most of the papers, paperwork, uh, we thought might have gone back to Braga as he was attached to Braga. Uh, and of course, we found many of the things like, you know, um, uh, inventories and a lot of uh, things written, uh, like some of the rooms, what type of furniture was there, even some colors, you know, uh, which uh, and in which room, what was there. So, uh, which helped us to get as close as possible. I wouldn't say 100%. So, after going through all this, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, like the inventories, what we found, little bit history, what we found, and comparing it to the other ho similar houses, which we saw, maybe some of uh, the garden features in Braga. So, which helped us to uh, uh, get the place as close as possible. Um, so we have a question uh, from Cyrus again. Uh, do, do you keep a record of all the new um, changes done at the Palacio so there is documentation for history purposes? Can I answer that one, Julian? Yes, yeah, um, sure. So actually, we have not made any major changes in uh, the painting, and uh, either in the painting or changes in the house itself. So that is one of the reasons why it is taking so long for us to do. So we have spent the last 20 years actually restoring the house and bringing it to the state which we are presently. So there are many features in the garden which have not been uh, um, restored because uh, we do not know also how to go about it. Um, and if you noticed uh, in the chapel where there are the frescoes, we haven't completely uh, cleared up all the old paint because we do not have the technique and because of the COVID times, it was not possible to contact someone who could personally come and help us to restore it completely. So. All in all, we have not, except for the furniture and things which are movable, or we have not really made any great changes in the house itself. We have just preserved it and enhanced it and repaired it the best way we could possibly. Thank you so much. If uh, there's no more questions, um, I'll just like to um, conclude this lecture. It's been a very beautiful story. I'd like to thank our uh, presenters uh, Ruben and Celia Vesco de Gama um, for sharing um, the story of their property. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, our attendees um, for attending today. Um, uh, thank you for being here and also for your wonderful questions um, uh, that you know added to our conversation. Um, so thank you very much. Um, and 
I hope we hope to see you at our next lecture. Thank you, Julian. And thank you all the participants as well.